the harlequin ladybird has been found to have become established in the UK without evidence of deliberate introduction. Since its discovery, it has spread rapidly across the country and now not only poses a threat to our native species of ladybird, but is also having a direct effect on human activity. We travel to Oxford to find out more about what makes the harlequin such a successful invasive species. Richard Comont of the Centre of Ecology and Hydrology has conducted extensive research on the harlequin ladybird. The reason we have the harlequin in Britain is because it was originally introduced in Europe into France as a biocontrol agent. It was first introduced in 1982 into hot gardens as a trial to see if it can control aphids successfully. And um, it gradually became established here, particularly around the year 2000. DEFRA actually notified them as uh, official nuisance insects a couple of years ago. So how has the harlequin ladybird become established without initially being considered invasive? There was this 70 year lag period where it was being introduced into Florida peach orchards and that sort of thing without any problems. Then it was thought to be this really safe thing. It would just eat them and then it would finish the, up all the aphids in the area and then it would die out itself. And so it was thought of as this really safe biocontrol agent that you could do whatever you wanted with and it would be fine. How did the harlequin arrive in the UK? There's a second introduction which was centred on a supermarket in the middle of Derby. And that is the other main way that the harlequin moves around, is being spread by human transport. So the Derby record almost certainly came over from Canada on market garden produce, so vegetables, celery, that kind of thing. They can just sit in the stem and they're quite happy to be shipped around the world in that kind of fashion. But the harlequin is a really good disperser without um, human influence. The harlequin is a really, really voracious species of ladybird. If you go through the literature, there's records of it eating 54 different species, and that's almost certainly a massive underestimate. But even that includes aphids, adelgids, scale insects, butterflies, moths at varying stages, both caterpillars and eggs, and basically any other small insects that it comes across, it will try and eat. There are very, very few things that the harlequin will actually refuse. What is the preferred habitat of the harlequin ladybird and how will this impact native species? Preferred habitat is defined by where it can find food. So limes and sycamores are really good habitats for it because they get covered in aphids all summer long. Other Cochinellidae, the other ladybirds, will try and have their preferred habitats but if the harlequin is there they tend to get eaten. So for those species which have a significant niche overlap with the habitat of the harlequin, are really being hit quite hard and the main species that we're particularly worried about is the two-spot ladybird which is some work that we've done and had published this year it's found that the two-spot has declined by 44 percent in five years in Britain. If you look before and after the harlequin there's a really significant tipping point when the harlequin arrives in the vicinity of these species they go along quite happily and then they suddenly plummet and that's particularly marked for the species which do have this significant habitat and diet niche overlap with the harlequin. But if you look across all 25 of the native British Cochinella Day, then they're all declining by varying extents because the harlequin is such a habitat generalist, you can find it virtually anywhere. Why is it considered a pest, not just ecologically, also economically? The main reason, certainly in Britain, is that it overwinters in really big numbers in houses. So you get aggregations of hundreds, sometimes thousands of specimens. And if they're in the loft or in the shed, that's not such a major problem. But they're quite regularly found in people's bedrooms, in kitchens and living rooms. And you don't have to be frightened of insects to not be too keen on that idea. But the other way that they are posing a problem, mainly in North America, luckily not in Britain just yet, is a real major pest in vineyards. Because over the winter, once the aphids have dispersed, the harlequins spend their time looking for sugar to feed up on. They overwinter as adults and they don't move for six months, so they need as much fat and sugar supplies in their bodies before the winter as possible. So when you pick the bunch of grapes to go and trample it into wine, you don't just trample the grapes, you trample the ladybirds as well. And you release their various not such defensive chemicals to put into wine. And one ladybird can take five litres of wine to make it essentially undrinkable. The harlequin ladybird has proved to be such a successful invasive species because of its ferociousness, adaptability and its generalistic approach to prey. These characteristics have led it to create a niche overlap, causing a sharp decline in population numbers of our native species.